Welcome back, Orleans, to more Siberia. We forgot to pick up a little sum sum here back in the office. We need this telescopic key and the umbrella before we head to the gate area. So make sure you pick that up. If you are trying to win. You will need that for this guy here. Many paths to take here. Hedge maze. Hedge mazes scare me. Good morning. You've got a magnificent garden here. Oh, please don't talk about it. Since my gardener automaton broke down, there are weeds everywhere. You can't imagine how much work it takes me. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. We're not used to doing without our robot help here in Veladiland. But everybody says that we're going to have to get used to it. Okay. No point, it's locked. Well, that sucks. Hey, we could take that. Now let's head back. That strange looking ladder we saw. See right here we have a cross-shaped key hole. I need a key. And we pretty much have that key.
yesterday, something terrible happened. I do not know who to turn to, who to talk to, so I've decided to write it down. You, dear diary, are now my confidant and sole guardian of my secret thoughts. Hans lies in the next room, teetering between life and death, and I am terrified. Oh, the injustice of life. First Mama, then Hans. Please, dear Laura, don't take my little brother as well. Hans made me promise to keep this a secret, but it's a burden. It's too heavy. I know I can tell you, though, dear diary. We discovered a cave in the mountains, a marvelous cavern with ancient paintings on the walls. Only prehistoric man could have painted them because there were depictions of mammoths, which are prehistoric creatures as well. That much I know. I hate mammoths now. It's all because of them and because of the stupid prehistoric children's toy. Why, Hans? Why did you try to take it? And why did I let you climb up there? It's my fault you're in a coma. Hans, if you die, I do not know how I could forgive myself. Hans has still not regained consciousness. Father cannot sleep. Gertrude tries all day long. Outside the heat is suffocating, but inside the house it's icy cold and dismal. I still have hope, though. I know my brother. I know his strength. He will pull through. He never gives in. I cannot think of anything else but Hans. In all my waking and sleeping dreams, I see him fall over and over. I see his head hitting the rock, his oh-so-pale face softening. I have taken refuge in the attic. It's the only place where I can find any peace wrapped up in all my memories. Five days have passed since the accident, and Hans has still not opened his eyes. To see him like this is unbearable. Please, God, protect him. Take my life, not his. I feel so desperate, so alone, I want to snuggle up in Father's arms, but I dare not. He's just so impassive. Oh, Hans, don't leave me here. It's happened. Hans has come back to life. He opened his eyes and uttered my name. My name. Do you realize this is the happiest day of my life? I want to take to the streets and sing, to proclaim my joy to the world. Thank you. Oh, thank you, God. How wonderful, how beautiful life is. Gertrude and I cannot stop breaking into uncontrollable fits of giggles. Hans even wolfed down his meal today. I knew he was tough, my little brother. Even father smiled at me today when he said good morning. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. I'm totally absorbed in Hans's recovery. I've scarcely five minutes to reach myself to return to my refuge and scribble down these words. It is very curious whether Hans is hungry, thirsty, or if he wants something he cannot stop saying my name. He can't bear it when I leave him even for an instant. Gertrude thinks that I should move my bed into his room to help him sleep better. I hope that father will agree. Today was the first day that Hans has left the house. We went for a short walk in the garden, but Hans is still very weak. The doctor said we should be patient and shouldn't rush him. So hard, though, I hope so that the life can return to how it once was. Hans has been out of his coma for a month now. He still doesn't say much and has difficulty moving. He sits motionless for long periods of time, his eyes wide open as though lost in thought. I've often had to call his name several times before he acts. And he'll smile, and when he does, the moment is magic for me, and I couldn't possibly be happier. I had to talk to him. The burden was too great. I asked Hans about his accident in the cave to find out whether he could remember. He could out only one word. Mammoth. And his eyes glowed so strangely when he said it. It frightened me. I go back to school today, and for the first time in my life, I'm dreading it. I am afraid of leaving Hans alone. Despite Gertrude's kindness and attention, I have the impression that Hans is much less nervous when I'm there. When I was doing my homework yesterday evening, Hans crept up on me so quietly he made me jump. He took a pencil and a blank sheet of paper, and curiously, he started drawing. It's the first time since his accident he's done anything but daydream. Hans scribbles almost obsessively. It's all he'll do, all day long. I feel it annoys father. Nobody else understands, but I can see that Hans is trying to draw mammoths. Today is my birthday, and Gertrude has made me an apple pie. My favorite. But father's not returned home for lunch, and Hans doesn't want to leave his room. The best present I could ever have is to see Hans back on the way of recovery. Snow is falling. It's so beautiful. The doctor visited to examine Hans. He seems happy that my little brother has fully recovered his faculties. It's truly a miracle. I don't understand why he hasn't talked more, though. Why isn't he livelier, like he was before? It's Hans' birthday today. He's 11 years old. 
of the strangest of impressions that actually he has lost five years, rather than gain more. The doctor just left us all whispering with father. The serious expressions worried me awfully. What could they be hiding from me? I'm grown up now. I'm 15. I can understand everything. I am too scared to ask father what is happening. I've been thinking, and it seems to me that Hans's attitude isn't normal. The shock of the fall and the coma must have been so much more serious effects than we first imagined. Hans, my dear brother, what's happening to you? I've discovered the truth. Hans is stunted, physically and mentally. I've eavesdropped the conversation between the doctor, father, and Gertrude. Gertrude buried her tearful eyes in her apron, and father muttered the word retard under his breath. How could he say such a thing? See, Stan, we are on the school holidays. This means I can spend all days with Hans, protect him from father's permanent dark moods. He can accept the fact that Hans, his only son, will stay in the state forever. It's truly difficult to accept, but it is not Hans's fault. Mine may be, but not Hans. I don't know how to make father understand. He seems so full of hatred. It's dreadful. He feels so powerless. One year, one year has gone by, and it feels like eternity. The situation shows no signs of improvement, neither in terms of Hans' mental health or father's attitude toward him. Extraordinary. Father's decided to take Hans to Paris for a new test. He says that only in French capital will he find two competent doctors. We must make Hans ready for the great expedition. No news from Father's and Hans, but I remember ho remain hopeful. I'm sure they will take good care of my little brother. They have returned! Hans rushed into my arms and started crying. It took me a long time to calm him down and get him to sleep. Father still as taciturn as he was before he left. The French doctors have confirmed the diagnosis. Hans will remain physically and mentally impaired, like a fucking retard forever. I am stunned. The summer is coming to a close. It's been less stifling than the last. The sun has put color in Hans's cheeks. When I look at him, I have difficulty imagining that he will not change. Father still says nothing and increasingly shuts himself away in his office factory. Jesus fucking Christ, are you serious? Holy shit balls. You guys can read that on your own time. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not reading all that. Fuck that. This is a let's play, not a let's be gay. I'm reading enough with Inquisitor. You can figure out the, the fucking tale of Hans on another note. are you? Hello. Retard. Mammoth. You draw mammoth for Momo? Ah, Momo, it's you. You scared me.
Cool, Momo. What are you doing in here? Momo want Mama's picture, like Han's picture. Sorry, I haven't got a picture of a mammoth with me. Take paper and pencil and draw Mammoth for Momo. <laughs> you don't give up easily, do you? It's a demanding little retard. Momo, I've got to go. You gotta draw fucking mammoth, dude. Some nice boots. There we go. Get us a badass little man the drone. Oh yeah, perfect. Momo. Momo, I've got something else I want to ask you. Momo listening. Momo? What the fuck did you do with the goddamn fucking picture we made, Momo? You silly bitch. Who the fuck is it? I don't like the way this inventory works. It sucks. Stupid as shit. Shut the fuck up. I'm doing the Momo dance. I'm doing the Momo dance. I'm doing the Momo Thank dance. You. Momo happy. Now follow Momo. Momo show his secret to Kate. Momo is a fucking Momo. Some longest journey shit right here. All right, let's jump out the fucking window. Merry Man! 
He went northwest. Damn it, Momo. Damn it, Bobby. Damn it, Bobby. God damn it, Bobby. Oh, this kid's kind of a dick. I didn't really want to get my cardio done like this. He's gonna have a treadmill later. This is ridiculous. here on this rock. Jerk off. <sighs> there you are, Momo. This is some walk you've taken me on. I've got to say, though, it sure is mighty pretty. Momo come here often. Momo like make splash in water. Right. Now we're here. What do we do? Kate and Momo throw stones in water. Momo, we're here because of the cave. Something to do with the cave. Momo and Kate, friends. It must be fascinating to live in a village full of automatons. Automatons made by hands. Difficult work. When Momo big, he do like hands. Momo, friend of automatons. Tell me, Momo, do you really think that after all these years, Anna's brother is still alive? Anna always say hands go away, but hands come back, maybe. Momo, I've got to go now, but see you later, maybe. be broken. I've got to get a helping hand here. It must be broken. Was that Momo? He's the momo -iest Momo in town. Momo? Momo, this... Can you help me? What do? Help me open the deck. Momo strong. Well, we'll see about that, kid. You look pretty fucking scrawny to me. Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh, shit. We got a problem, Houston. Whoops.
That looks broken. Oh shit. You're a brainiac. I could use one of the oars from this boat as a lever, but how am I ever going to get a hold of it? Try the broken lever. Okay, pulls the broken lever from Herbert JJ. Intactly. It's the oar Ugh, within reach. That oar is all dirty and wet. Well, and that's what she said, but... Ugh. That ore is all dirty and wet. Fucking serious? I have to play this whole game as a prissy bitch? Not fucking funny. Momo. Momo? I've moved the ore nearer. Be a good boy and carry it for me? Momo say yes. Momo wanna rub dick all over Kate's titties, yes. I mean, let's be realistic, folks. The gore you got there, buddy. Momo, Momo. Can you help me, please? What do? I need a hand. Momo say yes. I think we know where this is headed. Kate's about to get oared. In places she's never been oared before. Oh, that's what he's gonna do with it. Never mind. <laughs> Momo, very strong. Thank you, Momo. Kick him right in the fucking water. <laughs> this is Sparta.
Okay. There it is. Another phone call. Hello? Kate? Is that you? Well, Who's yeah. Who did you think it was? Uh, I didn't recognize your voice, that's all. Must be the distance or something. So, spill the beans. What's Europe like? You lucky lady, you. Honestly, I never get that kind of break. Well, so far all I've seen of Europe is this tiny village. And frankly, they're not very hospitable. Oh, the whole case is getting really complicated. There's this surprise heir I've got to find. I know. I talked to Lynn, who bumped into Joss, and she had coffee with the head honcho this morning. He didn't sound at all happy. The client's meeting him tomorrow, and when Marston tells him that the sale's not even gone through yet, whoa, you're going to be pleased you're on the other side of the ocean when that bomb goes off. Yeah, I get the picture. But so, how about yourself? What's up at work? We lost the Sarah Lou trial. I worked five months on that dumb case. I remember. So, for a bit of therapy, I went to Boomies. The sale started yesterday. Wow, lucky. It was absolutely crazy, Katie. Absolute mayhem. You know that blue silk top I wanted? Guess how much I got it for. I don't know. Dick. $250? $200? $140. <laughs> Just get yourself back here and I'll go down with you. <laughs> like it's my choice. Look, I gotta go. Call me soon, huh? I want a blow-by-blow -blow account of every moment of your great adventure. Get out of here. Look after yourself. You too. Yeah, I will. Well, that's a good idea. We're just enjoying the beautiful graphics. The fuck is this shit? I want to get on it. Totally reminds me of the longest journey. Animation, character, backgrounds. Anyways, folks, we'll see you soon with another episode of Siberia soon to come. Thanks for watching.